everyone, konnichiwa! This is Tina and welcome back to my channel. Yes, finally, I am doing a skincare routine video and a non-sponsored one, which makes it sound kind of ridiculous because I'm like, I don't have that many sponsored videos, but I guess I've never actually done a PM skincare routine that's completely unsponsored or in collaboration with anything. So yeah, it's finally here and a lot of you guys have asked for it. So the reason why I hadn't already done this is it is really, really hard for me to film a routine video because my routine is different like on a daily basis. I rarely have the same routine for weeks or months and I do try to listen to my skin to what it wants and what it needs. This is why I struggle to put together a skincare routine because I'm always trying new products. My skin is like this or it's like that. It's dry or it's oily or it's irritated. So what I would like for you guys to focus on more is when, why, and how I use these products rather than focusing on each individual product and saying like, this is amazing. Obviously I am going to be including products that I have tried and I really like and things that I would recommend. But again, it's gonna be so different depending on each person's skin type. So I want you guys to more focus on how I'm doing things or why I'm choosing these products to be in my routine. Before I start the routine, I do wanna mention that my skin type is normal to combination with dehydration. Currently it is going from winter to spring. When it's hay fever season my skin does flare up and react to the pollen and can have like a bit of an allergic reaction. It gets kind of red patches or it gets itchy in that so that is something that I had been struggling with although this routine that I've been doing for a while seems to be keeping all that at bay and making my skin a bit more easier to deal with. Let's get into the routine. Alrighty, so of course we are going to start with putting our hair back. I did mention these Daiso headbands in my previous video of must-have beauty tools that I recommend. If you want to check it out, please go through the link in the iCard. We are going to start off by removing my makeup. I am using the Hadarabo Gokujin Oil Cleansing. I am trying to use this one up since I have had it for a little while, but it has definitely become one of my favorites. It is an olive oil-based oil cleanser that is free from fragrance colorant mineral oil alcohol and parabens i like it because it has quite a light texture and is very gentle while still being very effective in removing makeup so i'm just taking a couple pumps in my palms and then massaging it over my skin i try to focus on breakout prone areas like my chin first and then move on to brows lips and then my eyes last I do my eyes last personally because it usually does have the most makeup and I don't really want to massage all of my eye makeup around my face. I actually did time myself on how long I was cleansing because usually it's not something I pay attention to but in this video I did take two minutes to cleanse my face before adding water to emulsify. This is when I'm wearing makeup so even if you're not wearing makeup I would recommend to cleanse for at least 60 seconds with your first step cleanser. Cleansing is truly one of the most important steps in a skincare routine because if you don't properly remove everything that is on your skin the skincare that you apply afterwards isn't going to work properly and also it can lead to breakouts so make sure you take your time and cleanse every part of that beautiful face of yours once you feel like you have broken down everything with your oil cleanser wet your palms and add a little bit of water to your face to emulsify so this is a really important step as well without emulsifying the oil cleanser the cleanser will basically cling to your skin and it won't wash off properly leaving that greasy feel onto your skin so make sure you add a little bit of water emulsify and then wash off all of it with lukewarm water now for the second step cleanse today i'm going to be using the Pareto defense barrier ph cleanser this is one of those low ph cleansers at a ph of 5.5 it is a loose gel formula that foams up fairly well for a gel cleanser it does include minimal ingredients but has centella asiatica to soothe your skin as well as tea tree oil which gives it a little bit of a fragrance nothing that bothers me but just so you are aware it can smell a little bit of tea tree so i'm just going to take some in my damp hands and foam it up prior to applying it to my face. I'm going to start massaging it from the t-zone again first where there is the most oil and then gently massaging it all over the face. 
Again, I did cleanse for about 60 seconds with my second step as well. This makes sure that you're getting rid of any water-based impurities as well as any of the leftover oil cleanser. And of course, don't forget to cleanse the jawline as well as areas that you're prone to missing like under the nose. Personally, I would not say that it is the most hydrating cleanser. It is a pretty basic one, but it is very affordable and something that is easily accessible by people all over the world. It is also vegan, cruelty free and free from artificial essential oils, fragrance, ethanol, parabens and all that icky stuff. Now this next step is something that I only do if I'm not showering right after my cleanse. So I'm using the Garnier Micellar Cleansing Milky Water. I do not necessarily recommend this product. Its milky texture actually makes it hard to use sometimes. I will often use micellar water to clean up makeup on a q-tip and that and it can be hard because of its thick texture but I am trying to use it up. I would not use this all over the face or any micellar water to fully cleanse my face but it is totally okay to use on a cotton pad and swipe across my neck as well as my hairline and ears to get any leftover makeup or cleanser or something that I may have missed in my double cleanse. Yes, we will be exfoliating tonight so I'm using the Neogen Bio Peel Gauze peeling in a lemon. I do this maximum twice a week. I have been loving these Neogen pads because they combine chemical and physical exfoliation. Some of you may know I haven't had the most success with chemical exfoliants so I like how it's kind of like a middle ground. Uses chemical exfoliating ingredients like lactic and glycolic acid as well as lemon, orange and papaya extract while giving physical exfoliation with the gauze pad. So this particular one is the vitamin C out of the range which helps to even skin tone. I know they have other types in the range as well and they've also recently renewed it so I'll have to try the other ones out. So we're going to start with the yellow gauze side first using gentle circular motions again starting in the t-zone where the skin is the toughest and needs the most exfoliation my skin is not sensitive but can be reactive so you can kind of see my skin getting a little bit red while exfoliating it doesn't hurt or sting or anything it's just my skin and it will go away after a couple minutes now we are going to flip the pad and use the white quilted side to wipe off any debris and dead skin that might be left over Lastly, remember to wash this off. It is a exfoliating formula that requires washing off, so make sure you don't leave it on your skin. My skin definitely feels super smooth after using these pads and it allows for products to be applied after to absorb way better. I personally haven't noticed any obvious evening of skin tone, but I haven't used it super consistently and I am getting towards the bottom of the jar, but there is still plenty of essence soaked in, so it's nice that it's not drying up at all either. Next, my favorite step of the skincare routine, the hydration step. So today I am taking the Revectin Treatment Lotion. If you do want a one and done toner essence, this works great. A little bit goes such a long way. You can tell because I've barely used any of it when I've already been using it for a couple of weeks. It is definitely a very hydrating toner and it is also gentle and soothing even for sensitive skin. It is a good one to use for me personally when my allergies are flaring up my skin and I want something really simple. To hydrate it uses hyaluronic acid and glycerin and then to soothe it has ingredients like centella asiatica and licorice root. It also includes soybean extract which is a, a favorite. So I recommend taking some in the palm of your hands and then massaging it onto the skin. It is quite a viscous texture so it can be quite difficult to splash on or kind of like pat into your skin. I definitely do not recommend using a cotton pad because it's just going to soak it all up. You can see it can foam up a little bit when trying to apply. So just take your time and massage it onto your skin. One layer is generally enough, but I may layer just a little bit extra on my cheeks since it can get dehydrated very easily. It is definitely instantly hydrating and leaves my skin feeling super plump. So I've been loving it using it in the drier seasons. Next, yes, it is back again. The I'm from Mugwort Essence. This has has basically become a staple in my skincare collection. It is perfect for when my skin is flared up or irritated and great after exfoliating as well. So this one is a slightly thicker texture than water but definitely more lightweight than the Revectin. Of course this is not always a necessary step but I like to do it after I've exfoliated or as I said recently when my allergies have 
been irritating my skin. Once I have applied the mugwort essence, I do let these two layers sit for a little bit and absorb into my skin. The mugwort essence also helps to cool down the skin, so I left it on just for a couple minutes to let the redness from the exfoliation die down. Since I let those layers dry down a little bit and lost a bit of my dampness, I'm going to quickly mist with the COSRX Low PH PHA Barrier Mist. If your skin is still damp from toner, don't worry about misting. It's just a rule of thumb that damper skin does absorb skincare products better, so misting in between layers is a super quick and simple way to retain hydration. To be honest, there is nothing that spectacular about this mist. It is a very light hydration, nothing rich so if you do have drier skin it might not be enough but it is a nice little refresher especially throughout the warmer days and if you do have oilier skin now since we are all about soothing of course we can't go without centella asiatica i am using the apure madagascar ampule this product only has two ingredients i could not believe it when i figured that out i was like wait really only two ingredients it only has centella asiatica extract and madagascar so it's just a soothing healing anti-inflammatory potion that can be used by pretty much anyone since it doesn't have any added extra ingredients it'll work really well for people with sensitive skin and it doesn't have any fragrance whatsoever with this one I apply a few drops across my face it is a very slightly viscous formula that glides across the skin it really hydrates and soothes without any stickiness so works well for all skin types it's just a safe serum that helps skin especially when it's unstable I like it because I can just use it every day am and pm it's just so easy to reach for and appeal is also known to be extremely affordable so i think it's just a no-brainer i think everyone can definitely definitely benefit from this serum now of course we can't forget to seal everything in and protect our skin i have loved this dr jart ceramidin cream over the winter and the drier months it is quite a thick texture so it can be a little bit difficult to apply so i have been loving mixing it with some serums and oils today i'm going to be mixing it with the aura Acacia organic tomato oil this is the first time i'm using tomato oil but have been interested for a while since I have been following Leah Yu for ages and you know she uses it in her Great Barrier Relief which I recently tried since a friend let me try a little bit and oh my god I loved it but so sad because you can't actually get any of the Crave Beauty products in Australia so it makes me cry every single day please ship to Australia like now but anyway the example I'm showing in my hand is not a great ratio it is very hard to pump a small amount of the tamano oil but usually I would use a little a little bit more of the cream. The tamano oil does have a very earthy smell about it and since it is an organic oil it does have a natural green color. I don't mind at all but some people might find it quite strong. So far I have been loving the oil. It is very very nourishing and softens my skin. It is known to lighten hyperpigmentation even sunspots which is basically the reason why I bought it. I have not yet found something that works to lighten sunspots so hopefully it works i have not used it long enough yet but i just love it as a skin oil it is probably going to be too heavy for people who have oilier skin or even for myself in summer but my dry skin absolutely loves it I did buy this one for like $16 an eye herb, which is pretty cheap. And in US dollars, it's probably going to be even cheaper. And I actually ended up getting it for free because it leaked on the way here and they refunded it for me. So, you know, win-win. <laughs> and I have to say the Ceramidin moisturizes without it being super heavy. And I can really feel the protection of the cream even the next morning. Lastly, I will be using an eye cream. Flofushi Matsuge Bioyaki is actually an eye cream and eyelash serum in one. So I absolutely love the concept. I think it's something that might be needed on the market, especially recently since eye creams are like not a thing anymore, I guess. Although I still love using them all of the time. But I had to get my hands on this one since it was one of the best selling eyelash serums in Japan. So it is a serum that nourishes the eye area while 
while acting as an eyelash serum as well to strengthen your lashes. A little bit goes a long way. They recommend just one rice grain amount of product per side and you just apply it along the lash line with your eyes closed. It does work to plump up the eye area, nourish and is said to help with dark circles as well. So that'll be a nice little bonus. It is a gel texture that is full of peptides and collagen. So I'm really excited to see the long-term results. As for now, I haven't seen a huge change, although my left side outer corner lashes seem to be a bit longer and they also curl up naturally more than they used to before. So I'm kind of like, mm, maybe it's working. Lastly, I'm just applying the DHC lip cream. After running out of my Nivea Holy Grail, this has saved my lips from cracking and flaking dryness. It is a little bit thicker than the Nivea that I usually use. So I don't like using it as much for the daytime, but it works so freaking well to repair damaged lips. And that is it, you guys. That is my full nighttime skincare routine that I have been doing lately. Again, as as I said earlier, it does change day to day. So I might not use this exact routine every single day, but these are all products that I have been loving as of late. Alrighty, you guys, I hope you enjoyed my nighttime skincare routine. I do have to mention though, that everybody's skin is so different. Even if you have the exact same skin type as me or the same skin concerns, the products can still work a different way to you. So please don't hold it against me if it doesn't work for your skin specifically. And lastly, I would like to know what do you look for in the products that you use in the nighttime? Please let me know in a comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.